This is Balloon Star Defense gameplay, except something isn't right. There is actually no one playing this game. Well, at least there is no human playing this game. This entire playthrough was done by an AI, and it's managed to reach wave 63 all by itself. In fact, it's actually quite formidable. This begs the question, how is this even possible? Well, Balloon Star Defense is a game that requires a large amount of skill, with an emphasis on reflexes, twitch aiming, and positioning. Now, if I want to program an AI, I'll need some sort of way of interacting with the game without human input. If I can give a program control over my mouse, it will be able to perform any function necessary to complete the game. Seems simple enough, let's give it a shot. Now this program should click its own close button after a few sec- What? Joke aside, overriding the mouse control was quite trivial, and I didn't struggle with it much. Now that we can press buttons, let's give a simple drag and drop mechanism a go. I want the AI to place one dart monkey. So first, I'll need the coordinates of the dart monkey button, and then I'll need the coordinates of the tower's destination. To get the coordinates, I screenshot the game, put it in paint, and put my mouse over the locations I wanted to remember. Now I can tell the program exactly where to move the mouse. Let's code this. In practice, this works really well. In fact, this AI can place down a dart monkey in just 60 milliseconds. If we add in the ability to press the start button, we can now pass round one. Human free. Excellent. Let's see how far this AI can get. I don't think it knows the round ended. It's no surprise a glorified macro can't read, but it is a huge problem. Up until this point, there has been no reason to interpret the values on the screen, but now it has become a necessity. If you want to know if you can afford upgrades and towers, you need to read money. If you want to know if you've lost the game, then refer to the life counter. This solves a large amount of issues with the AI, but we still have no answer for detecting when the round ends. A hidden feature of the round counter is that it actually goes up the moment the round ends. While this isn't reflected by the display, we can see the change if we save and re-enter the current game. Only one question remains now. How do I read those values? The best way to read the values is to extract them from the processor's memory. Yes, I know this is technically hacking, but I'm not altering any information, and the information I extract from the process is available to humans from the display. So as far as I'm concerned, this is legit. Anyway, if I want to read the values, then I'll need to know the addresses. If you don't know what memory addresses are, they're like real addresses. Memory addresses hold values and numbers, Say, like a man who waits at a house to give you his number when you arrive. Sometimes this can even be a new address, which can send you on a small treasure hunt until you finally reach the prize. With the help of an app called Cheat Engine, I was able to locate the values I need. And by extension, I was able to build a map of where each of these values lied relative to each other. You can think of this as a suburb that you know back to front. If you know one address, you'll be able to find all of the others. It turns out this concept is crucial to the success of this AI, because this metaphorical suburb is constantly teleporting, such as the nature of the game's programming language, c -sharp. Luckily, I had an entry point, the money value. Whenever you enter a new session in Bloons Tower Defense, money is always equal to 650. I was exploiting this fact by using Cheat Engine to scan every address in code until I found that value. Since 650 is a very unique number for a variable, it is almost always the money address. After my a millionth time of doing this process manually, I realized I could automate it. And with this automation, my memory system was finally complete. So what else does this AI need to know to function? Oh, that's right, the prices. So many prices. There are 23 towers in the game, and each one has 15 possible upgrades. And since each difficulty has its own set of prices, we have to add up each unique set resulting in 1456 price values. I had to enter most of these values in manually, and it was not fun. Besides the costs, the AI also needs to be aware of the rules of upgrades. So things like, only two paths can be upgraded at once. Only one path can be upgraded more than three times. Don't upgrade a buccaneer to a trade empire. Things like that. There's also a special nuance that needs to be taken care of. The upgrade menu can appear on the left or the right hand side of the screen depending on the tower's location. Practical for game design, not practical for our AI. At this point the AI has gained enough features to be capable of completing a playthrough without any human assistance. Apart from strategy of course, as you'll see soon. To start out with, I define a simple strategy for the AI to follow. Place as many ninja monkeys and cannons as you see fit. 
Then I threw it into the map town center on easy and let it run wild. And boy did it run wild. The AI showed a strong sense of initiative and well thought out placements, easily blasting through the first 39 waves without losing a single life. But it was ultimately overpowered by a single Moab balloon. However, it was not done yet. After changing the map to Monkey Meadows and allowing the AI to place Dart Monkeys, I was once again blessed with more brilliancy. The AI repeated the success of its first run and made it up to wave 40 for a second time, and once again attempted to deflate the Moab. The Moab stormed through its defenses, taking heavy fire from all directions, but it was not budging, and our AI looked doomed to meet the same fate as its first run. But I underestimated the AI's resilience. Expertly using the life counter as a buffer, the defenses cut the Moab down just in time to absorb the punishment left over. Our AI had taken a huge punch, but it was still standing. At this point, I was almost satisfied with the AI's achievements, but I could tell it was destined for greater things. I decided to ramp the difficulty up to medium and gave the AI full freedom to place and upgrade any tower it wanted. With its new capabilities, the AI climbed higher and reached wave 59 on its first medium run. This time, it was not foiled by a MOAB, but by an unrelenting wave of regenerative balloons that multiplied and promptly bulldozed their way through the defences, despite Sorter's best efforts. This is commonly referred to as a regen farm by experienced players. A regen balloon can split into multiple parts. If it is allowed to regenerate, each part will grow back into its original, essentially creating copies of itself. The AI dealt with this on a second run a bit ironically, by using one of the only manually controlled towers in the game to do the majority of its damage. Using this peculiar strategy, the AI went through the remaining waves with ease, deflating the BFB and claiming its second victory against the game. On the hard difficulty, the AI opted for more dense defences, placing more towers than before, which led to some interesting behaviour as it tried to squeeze everything into place. Yeah, but once again, the AI managed to power its way through every single wave, destroying the wave 63 ceramic spam and the wave 78 camouflage spam. Then after a large struggle with the ZOMG, took that down too. Only one more goal stood in its way. Chimps. At this difficulty, the game has become so hard that merely placing random towers will never be enough to win. It was time for the AI to gain its final ability, a brain. You might be wondering how it's even possible for a program to learn things. Consider this digital fish. It must eat food to survive. If it eats enough, it reproduces. If it doesn't, it ceases to exist. The fish vary in speed, which is determined by its genetics. Fish carry their genes onto their descendants, sometimes with slight mutations. Let's see what happens if we chuck these fish into a tank with a steady supply of food. At the start, all fish are quite slow, and all is peaceful. However, as we observe the population 15 generations on, we can see a notable change in their behaviour. If we look 30 generations on, this change has become more prominent than before. And at generation 60, they have become absolutely savage, heat-seeking missiles. While I didn't force them to become faster, they just did, simply because the faster ones were able to survive longer. The balloon's AI will work in the exact same way, except instead of fish, we try several different strategies, then we will use the one that gets the furthest to create several new variants. We repeat this process indefinitely, just like in the fish simulation, until eventually, the strategies become strong enough to be chimps. Our AI used this technique for weeks upon end, until finally, it came up with the winning strategy. Our AI's defense starts with Sorter, placed between two different tracks, always a solid option. It later expands with an Engineer Monkey, and surprisingly remains idle until Wave 28, where it upgrades the Engineer just in time to deal with the lead balloons. During Waves 30 and 40, the AI was quite satisfied with its distribution of towers, and decided to start ramping up its damage output by placing a Super Monkey. The AI soon encountered its first Moab, and promptly destroyed it with little effort. Between the Mortar, the Engineer and the Ice Tower, the defenses were already becoming quite stubborn. During waves 40 and 50, the AI started preparing its towers for major upgrades. The Ice Tower was given a big boost, alongside the Super Monkey. Money was starting to accumulate fast, and the balloons were not making the defenses pay for it. On wave 60, the AI decided to intimidate the BFB with housing, which was quite effective. Wave 70 through 80 was smooth sailing, and the AI was showing success with some pretty unconventional strategies. But the AI knew there were bigger fish to fry, so it saved 40,000 to upgrade its first tier 5 tower of this run. This alone was enough to stop DDTs in their tracks. Scraping just enough money together, the AI bought its second tier 5 tower before wave 95. This allowed it to deal with large clumps of Moab class balloons with ease. The BAD was tricky. 
It needed to be damaged, and fast. The AI failed over and over again trying to destroy this behemoth, but it eventually found a solution. The extremely fast sniper monkey would eventually wear out the bad, and with the combination of the ice tower, the bad took more damage than it could handle, and the defenses slammed the door shut on any hope the balloons had of making it to the end. Victory was... Victory was ours, and with that final achievement, that concludes this video.